Hello and welcome to the second paint tool side tutorial where I'm going to show you three different things. First, I'm going to show you how vector layers and pen tool works in paint tool side. And then I'm going to show you how to make a perfect circle, uh, whether it be filled or just a stroke, because paint tool side doesn't have uh, any dedicated tools for making circles, so it can be rather difficult. And last, I'm going to show you a method on how to do hair. So let's start up by taking a look, look at uh, how vector layers work. First of all, create a new vector layer. Uh, it's done simply by pressing the icon for create a new vector layer, or if you have attached a shortcut to it, you just use that one. As soon as you have created a new vector layer, you can see all your brushes change. So you no longer have your ordinary brushes because now you're in vector mode. You have pen tools, curve and line. Now, for those who don't know what vectors are, uh, well, vectors, they describe um, how a line enters through a point. Uh, so they're mathematically calculated, which means that if I make a vector uh, like this, let me just draw a line for you. Then if you enlarge it like, uh, like this, it never gets it never gets ugly, like if it was a bitmap. Now bitmaps, they are only, um, yeah, to, to explain briefly, uh, bitmaps describes a pixel uh, by coordinate and what color it should have. So whereas vectors, they describe um, the moving of a line through a point. So you can see, I can keep enlarging it and it still looks fine in the edge. It never gets fuzzy, it never gets unsharp, it never gets pixelated. So that's the benefit of vectors. Um, if you have a digitizer, you can see that depending on the thickness you choose for your uh, pen tool, when you press harder, it becomes thicker, and when you press lighter, it becomes less thick. The smoothing can also be applied here. Uh, so if you have trouble getting those clean lines, you just apply smoothing and whoopty becomes much easier. But apart from that, you can press control down and you can see some points uh, becoming visible. Now what I'm actually drawing here when I use pen tool is called NURBS. NURBS stands for non-uniform rational ba basis blinds. Non-uniform rational basis blinds. So it's opposed to uh, Photoshop. Photoshop does um, uh, splines, ordinary splines with Betsier handles. So if you choose a point in Photoshop, it'll give you two handles that, uh, yeah, that can describe how the line is going through that specific point by you moving those handles. So in Photoshop, you have both the specific point and its two handles. In Paint Tool Sci, you only have the point and you can move it as you like. If you need to further change how the, the line is cutting through this point, while control is down, you just press a point and you have a new point. And you can move that around. So it's really easy to use and um, it's great for doing the inking parts if you are making comics. Uh, it gives you a nice clean line. So that was the introduction for uh, the pen tool. Now, let's take a look on how to, to make a perfect circle. Uh, first of all, you want to create a new vector layer and then with your curve tool enabled You just press somewhere here first you, cho you, you choose the thickness that you want the stroke of your circle to have um, And then press then you press delete because delete is a shortcut key to rotate your canvas Then you press again be very careful not to move your mouse So you press delete then you press left mouse key delete left mouse key and you just keep on doing this until you have reached all the way around. Now remember what I told you before, this is NURBS, so they are uh, automatically uh, interpolating. So it doesn't become uh, a jagged circle, it becomes a perfect circle. Um, so see here, and when you, have, uh, when you have finished your circle like this, you must press escape on your keyboard. So when you press escape, the circle is complete. Uh, if you want to fill it out, now it's still in vector, so I can I can still size it as I as I please. Uh, so let's say I want this size. But let's say I wanna I wanna fill it out. So what you do is you go up here into layer, 
and then you press rasterize. Rasterize means that we are transforming the entire layer and its contents from being a vector layer into becoming an ordinary bitmap layer. Once this has happened, uh, there is no turning back. Of course, I can undo now, but uh, you, you, you cannot make it into a vector layer again. So now we have rasterized it and we have a bitmap layer. So from here, you just choose your color, you choose your bucket tool and you press and your circle is filled. Now, remember, since this, is, has be, uh, since this has become a bitmap layer, you can only scale it down. You can, of course, also scale it up, but there is danger of it becoming ugly. So take a look here. If I just keep scaling up and I keep scaling up because this is a bitmap layer now, uh, it becomes fuzzy in the edge. So in order to avoid that, you want to have it scaled uh, for uh, for the appropriate uh, size that you that you want it before you fill it out and before you rasterize it. Uh, because as long as you are in um, vector layer mode, there is no punishment for scaling. But here you can see it begins become uh, it begins to become pretty ugly. Now the last part I want to show you is a method on how to draw hair. First of all, create a new layer. It's just an ordinary layer that we need now. So as soon as you have made that one, choose your brush tool. From here, you change the bristle, uh, the, the tip of your brush, to become a rough round one. Uh, down here, you can choose the size of your brush and you shouldn't make it too large, uh, but neither should it be too small. So first of all, let's say we want to make some brown hair. Uh, so we choose a basic brown color here and you just begin drawing. First of all you want to draw the mayor uh, uh, falling of your hair. So say if I want to do, uh, now I'll just quickly sketch it up. Uh, let's say we have a face that looks approximately like this. Uh, it's not good. And I want my hair to, to run approximately like this and we want hair here and we want yeah hair here and and then the rest of it goes on top here so we have a whirl here and separates here and here so from here you just now we create a new layer so we can disable this later on uh, you just choose your brush tool and your rough round one can maybe increase the size a little here and then you just begin drawing like this. As you can see it gives you some nice thick strands. If, uh, if you need them to be thicker you can always manipulate the parameters down here but this should be okay for most purposes. Um, if they're too thick we'll, we'll take a look at that later. So here we're just gonna make the rough uh, like this. Now to make it blend better, as you can see, it, it doesn't blend all too well in here. You, you, you choose your watercolor tool and very lightly you can stroke it like this. Don't let it become too much, it's just going to be like this. So don't press too hard and uh, just go gentle. When you've done this, you can create some thicker strands here. Uh, then create a new layer again and then be prepared to lighten it a bit. So now we're going to draw with the, the tip called fine line. Uh, now before we had rough round one, now we take fine round one here. So as you can see it creates some finer details here. And that was it. I am somewhat not satisfied of course, but this is just a tutorial so I don't need it to become really fancy looking. In the end, you might just want to stroke with a white one. I created a new layer again in order to, for my brush tool to be able to, to function uh, separately. So it doesn't blend with the colors underneath. So I'll just do my highlights like this, very gentle. Like this. So if I'm happy with this result, I merge my layers. Uh, you can go up here and choose uh, merge content uh, or merge down. I set a shortcut for control E so it functions like in Photoshop. And then you choose your watercolor tool again and then just do some minor blends like this. 
So of course now the guide layer underneath is still visible. We can either make it become invisible or we can merge and I can remove the, the lines by just using my watercolor tool. It's not a really it's not really a good method to do it like this. So you you probably want to go uh, using that method where you just disable it entirely because here I lose too much detail on each hair strand. So now I have to recreate it again, which is pretty stupid because I just made them. Uh, so here we go again. I'll first do it with my rough uh, rough round one like this. Yeah, as you can see, you can fiddle a lot with this. You can, uh, you can of course tune all the settings. Uh, make sure to choose the advanced to tick the advanced here if you need uh, if you need more control of your of your brush. But in general, just keep in mind: first use the the rough round to do the basic uh, hairstyle, then use the fine round for fine tuning. Like uh, if you want to do highlights and uh, and supple. Uh, directions uh, for the hair, uh, different directions for how the hair should flow. That was it for this time. Thank you for watching and see you next time.